the teams working here in the south are very burnt out for many years. They are fatigued, they, are, they, they suffer from burnout, they suffer from secondary trauma, but they suffer also from primary trauma because their children are in shelters, their sons may be in the army, and they also are at real risk for their lives. And so we created what we chose to call a resilience center. We didn't call it a trauma center, but we are not uh, doing it in a systematic way because now we are all responding to suffering from living here is really being very, very sensitive to all the noises and the... Uh, and, uh, uh, we couldn't hear the siren. It was uh, Friday and I was uh, preparing Shabbat and uh, my husband was uh, in our uh, bedroom and uh, in the last minute he heard the siren and uh, he yelled at us, uh, everyone into the safe room quickly. He couldn't close the door, so we uh, heard a huge explosion. Uh, he got hurt in his hand uh, uh, in the last war. It was like a morning with missiles rain. It was like missiles raining from the sky. Big whistle that you cannot hear with your ears. And then an explosion and I remember me flying in the air and when I fell down I screamed, please help me, help me. Let's talk a little bit about the preparation of the hospital for for uh, operation like this. You know the picture. It's Samson uh, bringing down the temple of the of the Philistines, which I always say was here, but the hospital was built later. Uh, we are always on alert, especially the last 12 years with the Qassam rockets uh, and the shooting in the area. I live in Ativa Sarah. It's the closest community. Uh, to Gaza, and my house is the last one in that community. This is how uh, the launch of two Qassam rockets uh, looked from the window of my bathroom. For a uh, for a physician under, literally under fire, what would you like to do if I could ask you uh, if you had a wish? Most of our workers live in uh, uh, cities and and rural areas surrounding Gaza, uh, so. We always think, think uh, during our work of our families, of our parents, of our children that are left at home under the attack of rockets. And some of us have also children that fight 12 kilometers south of this hospital in, in Gaza. So it's really split attention with a lot of burden of our workers. I have in mind a long-term program. Eventually that program will be also, uh, will, will shift also to the to the patient. Years ago I've been in, uh, in uh, James Gordon's course and I fell in love with it. I practice it, my wife practices it. Uh, I, I want to bring it to my staff, to my nurses, to my doctors and then to our patients. I have known Jim Gordon for many years. First time I met him in Washington when I was ambassador of Israel and then of course when I was in the foreign ministry in uh, Jerusalem. His uh, center that he's creating in Israel, the Center for uh, Mind and Body Medicine, is something which is unique and very necessary for this uh, area that is uh, under the scourge of terrorism. So he's helping Israelis, he's helping Palestinians, and this is also should be uh, appreciated. Also the fact that he brings Israeli and Palestinian doctors together to help other people in distress, whether it's in Haiti, is also helping to make our humanity better. And this is what Jim Gordon does. He helps the helpers and he helps everybody in need.